Hey guys, Mike Chen here in Tampa, Florida. If you don't know, the water surrounding Tampa has the largest number of grouper fisheries in the US and in particular, where I am right now. Madeira Beach is the self-reclaimed grouper capital of the world. And my first stop here in Tampa is Big Race Fish Camp. All right, food has arrived. I, this is my first stop, it's already a pretty significant seafood feast. So here's what I got. This is the fried grouper cheeks. I also got a uh, smoked fish dip. And here is the famous blackened grouper burger. This is what this place is known for. So it looks like tartar sauce, beautiful, tender. Oh, look how juicy this is. A little poke from the fork and juice is just oozing out of this beautifully black and flaky piece of grouper. So smoky, a little char on the outside, inside just wonderfully tender. I gotta try this, the grouper cheeks. Fish cheeks is by far the best. Oh my gosh. Oh, let me just go ahead and, uh, oh, fish this thing from the sauce. Fish cheeks, if you guys never had them. Besides the belly, which I also love, some of the most tender parts of the fish. And just look at how beautiful this is. Lightly fried on the outside, inside piping hot, tender, flaky fish. Dipping sauce, a little sweet, a little spicy. So delicately tender and delicious. Oh, this is so good. Mm, incredibly smoky and meaty. I think also loaded with pickles. So it's sour, a little crunchy. Mm. Now to part one of the main attraction. First of all, the fries they give you, slammed with garlic, like raw garlic and Parmesan cheese. I've never seen raw garlic on fries before. But heck to the yeah. All right, this is a ginormous fish sandwich. Holy moly, giant piece of blackened grouper, tomatoes, onions, lettuce. Oh, this is so good. Again, tender, tender fish. Smoky, a little char on the outside. Fish is soft and juicy. Paired out with a crunch from the onions and lettuce, that juicy burst of the tomatoes. And you can absolutely taste the freshness of this grouper. Come give this a try. You'll be hooked. All right, a couple more items. This is a little more of a novelty item. Had to get it. This is not just any ordinary corn dog. This is a lobster corn dog. First of all, this thing probably weighs at least a pound. You can see the giant chunks of lobster on this corn dog. And I already can tell this is gonna be crunchy. I'm pretty sure the only corn dogs I've ever had in my life has just been corn dog corn dogs. Never had a seafood corn dog and certainly never had a lobster corn dog. Take it a dunk. Oh, oh. Woo. At $24, this is probably the priciest corn dog I've ever been into. <laughs> this is freaking delicious. First of all, the outer shell, so incredibly crunchy. And inside, right below the surface, and I mean right below, we have struck lobster. Giant chunks of delicious, fresh lobster meat. Beautifully delicate and sweet and the tenderness and the sweetness of the lobster meat is just enhanced by this crispy outer shell. I mean, just listen to this. Dip it in some mustard to give it a bit more of a kick. And just let the sweetness of the lobster meat shine through. This is extreme crunch versus extreme delicateness. And you get a ton of lobster on this stick. I wonder what that is. That was like a little lobster arm. And again, look at this. It's not like this is all batter and a little lobster. This is full on lobster. They shoved it all the way that's on my hand. This is all pure lobster meat. I think they told me there's a whole lobster tail in this thing. So the crunch, the outside batter is just really a supporting cast to that sweet, delicate main event. Also, I don't know why, food just tastes better on a stick. Finally for dessert, this is really cool. I've had key lime pie all over Florida. Never had a fried key lime pie before until today. Look at this, fried key lime pie. 
Wow. This is some exciting stuff. Oh, look at this. The filling is just melted and gooey. And the outside just transformed into sort of like a donut texture. If you love key lime pie, and I love key lime pie for so many different reasons, you're gonna love this. That is a satisfying bite of key lime pie. Just make sure you got some tea or a drink next to you. And best key lime pie, of course, always gonna be in Florida. Look at this, beautiful crumble, crust, gooey filling, all fried inside this lovely, airy, sweet shell. Mm. Sweet and tart filling is so rich and creamy. All the characteristics of a great key lime pie, pretty much inside a donut. And I almost missed it too. I ordered a key lime pie, but I didn't see the fried key lime pie on the bottom. So glad I caught this. If you guys are around Tampa, and you like grouper, definitely give this a try. Get it blackened, probably one of the best fish sandwiches I ever put in my mouth. Actually, everything I got here is awesome. It was such a good place. And of course, finish up with a fried key lime pie. I'm at the original location of La Sangunda Bakery. This thing opened in 1915, and every day it turns around around 18,000 loaves of Cuban bread that's shipped all around the world. And that is what makes their Cuban sandwich so unique. Well, one of the things. Got two sandwiches here. I, don't, I got a steak and a Cubano. One of them weighs about a pound and a half. And this year, the first sandwich we're about to try, the steak sandwich oh look at that how pretty is this chopped up steak onions swiss cheese some peppers all sandwiched between their famous bread oh, this is so freaking delicious first of all this bread is a masterpiece this bread is so airy you get such a tremendous flavor just from the bread alone i mean everything else is good too the beef is delicious the onions are a nice crunchy touch sauce everything wonderful oh my goodness this bread mm. the crust it's a little crumbly and the inside just like chewing on a fluffy cloud the sauce soaks so perfectly into the air pockets of the bread as i'm waiting in line i see people just just walking in getting a giant loaf of bread taking it to go like every few minutes or so i'd be doing the same thing if i lived around here this this is what i'm really excited about this is about at least a pound and a half of sandwich definitely the biggest cuban sandwich i've ever encountered look at this majestic creature Again, that beautiful bread, mustard on top, Swiss cheese, salami, which is something you don't really see in Cuban sandwiches, pickles, roasted pork, ham. Only thing, I wanted it hot pressed, it wasn't, because I think with that cheese melted, this is gonna be even better. But once I pick this up, I'm gonna let go of this. There is just so much love I have for the sandwich. First of all, it is absolutely loaded with meat. So much ham, the roast pork is tender, it's juicy. You get a slight kick from the mustard and the crunch from the pickles. And the reason they add salami is because at the time there were a lot of Italian immigrants around here. So they added a little Italian flair to this delightful, ginormous Cuban sandwich. And again, all that great ingredient is just encrusted in that absolutely phenomenal bread. Even not toasted, you get that subtle outside delightful little crunch. And this whole thing from mouthfeel to texture to just the smell of it would well, send your taste buds into a frenzy. Also, they put a palmetto leaf on top of the bread so it doesn't dry out. And that just helps in the creation of this absolute masterpiece. Yeah, seriously, everyone, everywhere I look, people are just driving up, grabbing loaves of this bread. It's really inexpensive about, I think, 2 to $3 for a giant loaf. Oh, man, which one do you got? The Medianoche? No, I got the Cubano. Oh, okay. Yeah. Can't beat it. Try no. the Medianoche next time. Oh, yeah? Like All right, thank you. He's jealous of my sandwich. I'm jealous of his loaf of bread. Can't really go wrong with any of that in there. Also, as I'm standing here eating and talking, I'm just always smelling. The smell from the bread is just always clobbering me left and right. Mm. Another iconic seafood here in Tampa you have to get is the devil crab. This is originally a street food that gained popularity with the cigar workers here in Tampa. And this is what it looks like. Here it is, double crab. Outside kind of looks like a croquette. This thing is spiced on the outside, piping hot. Ooh. Wow, look at that. 
inside filled with blue crab meat, tomatoes, peppers. This thing is stuffed. This is so freaking good. Wow. Mmm. Savory, slightly sweet, both from the tomatoes and the crab itself. Again, so much crab is in here. Outside is so amazingly crunchy. And again, just a slight thin layer of breading. And this kind of looks like a, a crab cake, but the biggest difference is deviled crab is not fried, it's not broiled, it's roasted. It's baked to absolute crunchy perfection. The outside's got so much great flavoring. Most amazing thing here, besides the crab meat itself, it's just that subtle, delightful little crunch. I mean, I don't know if you can hear it. That crunch is just delightfully gentle and comforting. I can't believe I've never had one of these before. Juicier, more flavorful, obviously crunchier. In my opinion, it's much better than a typical crab cake. Must get when you come to Tampa. And what's so cool is that um, I basically just bought this here at a Italian market. They have uh, tables where you can sit down, but otherwise you, there's wines, there's um, baked goods. You can get your groceries here. And of course, you can get yourself a devil crab. And you should get yourself a devil crab. Take a little break. Um, found this pretty cool little farmer's market, Parksdale Market. Wow, seating area is cool. So this place is known for strawberry. They don't have the shortcake already. It's already out of season. They do have strawberry dough ice cream. Sweet, tart, pretty addicting. Also, they recommended their strawberry milkshake. I don't eat milkshakes a lot. This is one of the best milkshakes I've ever had. Tons of strawberries in here. This is freaking delicious. Mm. Now I'm really wishing I got to taste the uh, shortcake because everything else is so good. Anyway, milkshake, ice cream break, and then back to eating. This is West Fortune Seafood. We got live blue crab here. And it's something you gotta get when you're in Tampa. This is it right here. Can I get a order of this? That's Jumbo. That's Jumbo? I want Jumbo. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Ooh, ah, ah. Tray of Jumbo blue crabs. Look at these ginormous sea candies. Massive claws, beautiful tender meat. Steamed and covered in seasoning, mainly garlic and butter. As soon as I got close to this tray, you smell the garlic, you smell the butter. How good does that look? Crack it open, exposing all that delicate white sweet meat of the crab. Dip it in that butter garlic sauce and... I swear. When I took that bite, my food-loving soul left my body for a little bit. This is amazing. First of all, it's live blue crab, so you know it's gonna be fresh. Each morsel of meat is just unbelievably sweet. And when you dip it in that butter garlic sauce, the flavor is just intensified without covering up any of that beautiful sweetness of the crab. This might be the best blue crab I've had anywhere. You could also get the spicy, which I wish for some of these I did, just so I could taste the different flavors. But I really just wanted the original, the butter garlic sauce. Oh my goodness, I am being blown away right now. I mean, fresh blue crab on its own, already excellent. But the way they made this, accompanied by the sauce, even looking at this full tray of about five pound of crab, just made me wish I had two more trays of these. This is absolutely amazing. Amazing crab. And if you like shellfish, I would 100% recommend coming here and trying this out. The only thing I wish is they kept the miso and the tamale. I would have loved to have some of that stuff. But this crab, it's seasoning and sauce combo. is absolutely gonna blow you away. So if you're around Tampa, highly recommend coming here, get some of that.
final spot on this Tampa seafood tour, I'm at the West Ybor Barter House for another iconic Tampa dish, the crab enchilada. And before we get to that, my crab cannelloni just arrived. This is a house-made pasta with arugula on top and blue crab inside. So this city, blue crab has been such a big part of it, especially in the beginning where the city was just developing. Look at this. Pasta toasted on the outside, meaty bits of crab and cheese on the inside. So good, so good, so good. I don't think I've ever truly appreciated blue crab until I came to Tampa, Florida. I mean, this pasta is just wonderfully toasted on the outside. Inside, cheesy, stuffed with crab, I think it's some kind of butter sauce on the bottom. Holy moly, this is amazing. Mm, 10 out of 10. Texture, flavor, aroma, and just a pure beauty and elegance of it. I love how toasted that pasta is. The texture just impeccable. The cheese is there, it's not so much that it overwhelms that delicious gentle flavor of the crab. Arugula provides a bit of bitterness to kind of counteract the sweetness of the crab. This dish is almost too good. And that brings us to the crab enchilada. And this is a dish that was made famous by the early immigrants of Ybor City. So back then, blue crab was really plentiful in the waters of Tampa. It was a very cost-effective food item. So a lot of the communities, including the Cuban community, the Italian community, the Spanish community, started making their own variations of crab dishes. Crab enchilada is basically pieces of blue crab with a tomato-based sauce, either served over rice or pasta. So this is a dish influenced by Cubans, Italians, Spanish, basically all the early residents of Ybor City. So again, a very iconic dish. And from the looks of it, just stunning. Giant pieces of blue crab, pasta, tomato sauce. Mm. This thing is spiced to perfection. Spiced to perfection. I mean, a little heat on your tongue on your lips, little tender sweetness of the crab in your mouth. Also a bit of smokiness from the caramelized onions. The amazing al dente texture that is this pasta. Makes you just wanna continue to shove this in your mouth nonstop. This is so awesome. The pasta dish before this, amazing as well. I don't think I had a bad bite of food here in Ybor City today. My favorite is definitely the fish burger, the Cuban bread. Oh, devil crab. Butter, garlic, blue crabs, and of course what I'm having right now. This is a seafood tour like no other just because there's so many distinct seafood dishes in this one little neighborhood inside Tampa. I mean, I love going around in different neighborhoods and different countries, but there are a lot of these hidden gym places right here in the US and this city is definitely one of them. So if you are in or around Florida and you love seafood, all the places I went to is gonna be listed down below for you, definitely check it out. As always, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later.